Hi, I'm Cherish, and I'm a junior and a state champ gymnast. All right, second at nationals. My best event is balance beam. But it hasn't always been that way. I didn't start gymnastics until sixth grade, which is way older than most people. Some of the coaches didn't want to bother with me because they thought I was too old to learn. But there was this one coach, Coach Maria. She spent so much time with me. Coach Maria didn't just focus on what I was doing, she believed in what I could do. What I learned from that is everyone has potential to be different than what they are right now. You can't really imagine what someone can do unless you really get to know them and see their potential. Coach Maria didn't just teach me gymnastics, she made it personal. Yes, yes, Pulpit Rock Student Ministries. It's Christmas time, y'all. We are thrilled that it's December the 9th, Wednesday. We're going to have a great time tonight wrapping up what has become my favorite series that we have done, maybe yet, straight out of Luke 19, where Jesus was blowing people's minds with his treatment of Zacchaeus, the outcast, the misfit. Uh, this dude was hated by just about everybody, um, but Jesus gave us a great example of how we should be treating other people. We've been talking in the series about how it's personal because Jesus knows our name, and I don't have to tell you students and leaders how important it is to me uh, that we address each other and know everybody's names and treat one another as family. We've been talking about through the It's Personal series that um, it matters a bunch because Jesus knows our story, our backstory. He knows what matters to us. And then last week, we talked about one of the most unbelievable things that exists in our relationship with Jesus, that he loves us no matter what. And I love what our new friend Cherish talked about a few minutes ago in her video, uh, this idea about change and how the change can come about in the lives of everybody. This is a truth that we can't escape, that people change. Now, I think sometimes, if we could think about it this way, I think that if people have a good thing going, uh, maybe we think they ought not to change. Uh, they ought to keep things going the way that they have been going. But if things are um, not right or not going well in the lives of people, I think we probably have the opinion that something in their lives uh, should change. And this change is inevitable for all of us, regardless of our age or phage or stage or walk of life, um, that this change is going to come about for everybody. And this change typically makes people uncomfortable. Um, I don't know anybody super thrilled with change. Um, I know I have some close relatives, friends, and loved ones who are a bit adverse to change, um, but it is going to come for all of us. But I think a question for all of us as we get ready to prepare for tonight, hey, do you have something that you wish you could change about yourself, but you don't feel like you can? Um, and I think that our minds, based on our human nature, would initially just go to something that would be negative in this. Um, but do you personally, where you are tonight, do you have something that you wish you could change about yourself, but you don't feel like you can? And you you could begin to imagine we're going to get to the Jesus answer here in a little bit, that anything is possible with him, that any change that we would dream possible that would align itself with what God wants for our lives, change is, this change is possible. Um, but what's something that you wish you could change about yourself, but you don't feel like you can? Um, and again, I think the negatives probably fill our brain. Is there is there an addiction to something? Um, is there a real negative or unhealthy mindset that you go to? Is there a toxic relationship that just keeps rolling on and rolling on that you wish you could change? Um, do you wish you could change your habits? Do you wish you could change your work ethic? Uh, do you wish that you could change a sense of laziness uh, that you might have going on? The possibilities here are truly endless. And as different as each one of us might be, um, each of us would have to, I would think, answer yes, uh, that there were things we would want to change about ourselves, but how do we begin to be in a relationship uh, with Christ that these changes could actually happen uh, in our lives? Uh, Jesus, again, had come into this town and had called Zacchaeus straight out of the tree and said, I'm coming to your house today, and there was a big renovation or change happening um, in the life of Zacchaeus during this account. Can you imagine the facial reactions, um, the verbal whispers and tremors that went through the crowd when they saw Jesus walking um, along the way with Zacchaeus to Zacchaeus' home? Um, but I wonder how many of us sometimes even feel powerless when we start to think about this change that we know ought to happen. Let's check out and see what God's word has to say from the book of Luke chapter 19 and verse 7 that all the people saw this and began to mutter, 
um, he has gone to be the guest of a sinner. And I would think that people who knew Zacchaeus were probably like, dude, that guy needs to change. Um, I, I would wonder how many people in this crowd had enough personal reflection to be like, hey, before I could think about change in the life of someone else, I sure ought to see about change in my own life. Um, but this was a visible thing to all the people. And we do know because we're looking back on a millennia of studying scripture that there was big, a radical change in the life of Zacchaeus, that he was again willing after salvation acceptance and repentance came to his home to basically give away all and more that he had taken from people. Uh, tonight's truth is that because of Jesus, anyone can radically change. And I hope that this lands personally with us uh, to realize that we are anyone. Um, I, I am anyone. You are anyone. This radical change um, that is necessary eventually for all of us and I, I don't think this necessarily has to do with the unique ways that God has wired each of us because I've tried to learn in the last year or so of my life that I, I don't want to escape uh, the wondrous ways, the weird ways that God has wired me, the things that he's gifted me or talented me to be able to do. I, I'm not talking about escaping those things, but there is renovation necessary in the hearts of all of us. Radical change is necessary, and that radical change is only possible through a very close and tight-knit relationship uh, with Jesus. And uh, I love how he treated Zacchaeus. Uh, I only hope that in my daily interactions with other people that I could learn to treat people uh, even now immediately this week with the mindset that the change that God wants to be bring about in the lives of all of us is only possible uh, through his son Jesus, which is a powerful truth for all of us. I have loved this series. I want to continue to live out uh, even this next year of my life using Luke 19, the story of Zacchaeus as an example, as a model about how I ought to be in relationship and treating other people. And I trust that you will do uh, the same. I'm excited for Christmas time. This is always a great time of year. Uh, COVID is going to try to flip this thing upside down as well. Um, this just seems like the nonsense just keeps going on and on and on. And, uh, but I just want to wish all of you and your families, your parents, your siblings, your grandparents, all of you, uh, just the very best of Christmas seasons coming up. I hope that you all have a chance to rest, uh, relax, really spend some time doing what you love to do. I hope that you will find some nourishment uh, during the season. I'm proud of the year that we had in student ministry. It was a very difficult year. We were unable to do most everything that we wanted to do, had scheduled to do, had planned to do. Um, a lot of it was a bummer. But I think the relationships that have been forged with you amongst one another, uh, the relationships that have been continued to be forged and formed between you and your core group leaders has been amazing. Uh, I've been able to develop much deeper relationships with a lot of your leaders. This has been a really, really profitable year. And I pray that as we bring this year to a close that we'll be able to focus on and remember um, we were able to prove as a student group what really is most important. Uh, in doing journey life on life ministry um, with one another. I'm so proud of you all. And uh, just want to wish you a very, very Merry Christmas. There would always be some things to be mindful of and to remind you about. This coming Sunday morning, December the 13th, will be our last Sunday for collection of new and unwrapped toys for local foster kids through our relationship with Hope and Home. And again, there's a way to do this virtually. There's some kind of QR, QF, whatever kind of code that is that can be scanned. will immediately redirect you to an Amazon wish list. And I believe that the, even the website link for that Amazon wish list is included on this flyer. So pause it, uh, take a picture of that, do what you need to do. But e even through church website, we can find a way. Let's make sure that local foster kids um, have a Christmas uh, like what we are going to have, which is generous and ridiculous and kind of extravagant. Let's make sure that we're taking care of our community in this important way. And then want to remind you that here in just a little bit at 630 and just a little bit, we're going to rev up Instagram live and we're going to try to have some fun together in this way uh, this evening. We'll play a couple silly games. We'll have some prizes to give away to be delivered to your home, either by a local food establishment or by one of us on Pulpit Rock Student Ministry staff, um, some prizes for you to uh, enjoy. I love you kids. I miss you a bunch. We hope to see a whole bunch of you here in just a little bit at 630. See you soon. Love ya. Later.
Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.